whatever it is you're fusing with whatever it is that's causing your your dissonance or your cognitive dissonance so to be in a state of confusion is just with fusion so to clear up this fusion i'll go back to the symbol of hern or hermes that michael brought up or mercury they're they're all at least in my reading and a lot of it i got from you at least in my reading those are all the same archetypal god right and so if you look at pictures and I, you know, I, I know we don't have these slides up yet, but um, I'll describe it. If you look at pictures of Hermes or Hearn, uh, we'll stick with Hearn. Um, he's usually, he's usually holding a serpent in one hand and a ring torque in the, like this. I don't know if you guys can see this, this is torque, right? A neck ring, right? That's an old rite of passage in, in that part of the world. And that speaking of which people would get, a torque when they sort of graduated from from some sort of initiation, some sort of accomplishment. And so Hearn is holding a torque and or a ring and a serpent and sometimes just a just a rod. So I'm going to I'm going to take that same thing, a ring and a rod. Now, that's that's Hearn and Hermes. Now, let's go to let's go to um, let's go to Babylonia, you know, um, Ishtar, the gates of Ishtar. Um, there's the female goddess there. And there's the the male god god there, and what are they holding? A ring and a rod, right? And then let's go. You can, you can go all over the world. Um, go to Egypt. You know you have different staffs or scepters. It's a, a ring and a rod. You have Zoroaster and, and Zarathustra, and you have the um, I'm I'm sort of forgetting the names of these things, but you have the you know the wing disc where um. I believe it's Zoroaster is you know standing in it and it's really the sun with wings and what is he holding? He's the god, the god of all gods, right? He's holding a, a ring and a rod. So what the hell? What are these symbols? What are we what are what are they what were our ancestors trying to tell us in these beautiful bas reliefs with these all this stuff going on, but the most powerful beings, the archetypes that we call gods, they're holding a ring and a rod. And sometimes they're holding other things, but very common it's a ring and a rod well what is the rod well that's the phallus that's the male staff right and what's the ring well that's the vagina and they're telling you about genesis the gene of isis the way in which birth comes through the female generation after generation after generation and the, the gods are basically telling you again that the human body is in fact the temple of god and you need men and women to come together to make babies if you want to survive. If you want to experience any God or spirit, the only way you're going to do it is in the temple, which is in the human body. The only way that, that you're going to keep doing that is to have babies or have a new generation to generate. So the gods are showing us that the ring and the rod is the male and the female coming together. And you can see this once you start to look at symbols and become symbol literate, you can start to see this everywhere. You can see it in the ancient pictures of Christ who's inside the Vesica Pisces, right? Well, he's standing upright. He's like the ring and, and the, the Vesica around him is, is the vagina. He's literally coming out of a vagina. So this comes, this, this symbology is so ancient. Now, and also I'm just gonna sorry go, to cut you off. I just had a mind explosion. I just looked at the power symbol on my laptop and it's yes. a ring and a rod. And it's, it's a ring and a rod, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So so I'll go into math real quick because because I want to talk about, at some point, I just want to at least get this open so people can dig into it themselves. Is You know, Paracelsus, all these people studied holistic thinking, right? And we look at things like phylotaxis, the way plants grow, the way they generate, the way seeds generate and regenerate, the way that all seeds only generate well not all seeds most seeds generate they need to be in darkness right half the plant is in darkness in order for it to, to come out into the light there's that as above so below that yin and yang that genesis that regenesis that balance and um we have a symbol for that and we would call it a greek symbol but it's much older than that and it's the phi symbol and if people don't know what phi is it's there's two different kinds of phi um but we'll just stick with the not to get complicated, it's it's a it's a ring and a rod, right? It's a circle, which stands for the female, the cosmos itself, and then there's a rod that splits it, 
and that's the male. And there's a there's a reason why it's split, because this symbol encodes everything that the the Hermetic Western tradition, alchemical tradition, Egyptian tradition, and even ba ancient Babylonian tradition. It encodes everything. It encodes life itself. It's a split, right? All of creation is this combination between formlessness and the thing that's created, which we would call form. And so we have this duality, right? The, 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 we you know, probably get into Hegel, get the split with Hegel, the dialect. Um, all of this is, is encoded in this symbol of phi. And phi is the most common ratio in nature. So our ancients, once we became woke, once we woke up to this, we had to encode it. We did, we did it in, in huge temples that are the human body. We did it in pyramidal structures that are the fire. The pyramid is the pura, P-U-R-E or A means fire, to purify. We put it into that that symbol and we put them all over the wor world and, and every like all these cultures are pure, have these pyramids and we don't even know what they mean. It's in there. And not only is it in the pyramid, all is based on phi and pi, right? Because it's it's mapping our connection to the earth we live on and to the cosmos above, right? We, we figured out that the, the, the same geniuses that knew that the organs had biospiritual resonance um, and mapped the human body, well, they also mapped the human body in the pyramid with the math that they used, math, meaning matter, mother, matrix. It's all a code, right? And I, I like to, I try my best to boil things down to some sort of symbol, right? Some sort of thing I can carry with me in my mind so that I can remember where balance is. And so far, what I've gotten from the Kabbalion, the Kabbalah, right? Kabbalah, three different aspects of the soul, um, is this one symbol. Now, there's probably symbols that 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 go beyond it that I'm unaware of. But this symbol of phi, this splitting of consciousness is, is a representation of creation itself, our body itself, and our biophilic, you know, our bio feed, our bio spirit and connection to, to everything. So um, it's also so this is a, a large leap for people that, that haven't studied etymology or language or symbols, but it's actually, believe it or not, the same thing makes plants grow, phylotaxis, in that ratio, the phi ratio, it also affects the way human beings create sci scientific language. And I know that seems like a large jump for people, but when you start to look deeply into the hermetic thinkers, the holistic thinkers, they started, well, they began with creating a system known as the alphabet that was not arbitrary. It was created solely based on its knowledge of the phi ratio in nature. So our, our alphabet, the symbols that we use to make up words and have this conversation we're having right now is literally a harmonic. And it was created by genius people. Uh, I'm not sure exactly who, who they were, but they encoded it in, in things like the Kabbalion. And that's why the Bible has codes, and that's why the, the you know, because the, the the English alphabet is coded, and the Hebrew alphabet is coded, and the Greek alphabet is coded. I know it's kind of a big, long stretch, but what's important is to realize that the human body itself is a harmonic code of nature. And in order for us to make it through this 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 time that we're in, we're going to need to come back to the yin yang. We need to come back to the balance. We're going to need to come back to the generative gender of generating, right? Of making new life. And what you were speaking of is a, a perversion of our language where they're saying, and same with you, Michael, where they're talking about doing away with gender by trying to make it fluid. It's post, obviously it's postmodernism, right? It's, it's all these, these uh, pseudo philosophers, um, I think most of them are French, and they basically are Marxists, right? And they're they're doing away with what all of our ancestors knew for I definitely say thousands of years, 
possibly millions of years that got us this far, that got us here today into this new technocratic state. And so I'll finish this right now. The language that we use upholds our reality, right? Carlos Castaneda explained that. And right now we're stuck in um, a language given to us by the people that control media. And it's basically a technocratic language or a highly technical language. And the problem with technical language is that it, it at least in, in the modern world, is it negates biological language. And, it, and they've reoriented it to where technological language is supposed to be um, prior, have priority over biological language. And that's wrong. If we keep going that way, our biology is going to suffer and, and we may end up dying as a species. It needs to be the way that our ancestors have taught us, which is your biology is life. Duh. Bio, right? Meaning life. So if you prioritize bio biological language ahead of technological language, then you'll be living in a much greater state of balance. And cultures that did this are the ones that got us here. And we need to, we need to heed their wisdom. We need to listen to them.